Yo, no guam black white and up. You can no kela who's get wala hakinginam. Gahak who's Chris Munsi there's Chris Yak and Dad Lowen can Munsi there can. See, like I said, I'm not very fluent. So I wanted to say my name is Sophie Hansen. My native name is Dlakwaj Anak. And my goal is to help children in, in what little I know of our language because I don't claim to be a fluent speaker. But my goal in life is to try and be more more vocal in our language than I am now. So, but um, I came to this uh, school here. Uh, not so much a school. It's a um, it's called Liquid Family Life Society, and it's a it's a establishment where they help people, and they have children's programs like daycare and um, Head Start program, uh, counseling and teen activities and anything that got to do with the community. They think of things to do for the community to help. You know? And uh, my, I hang out at the, I came here 21 years ago and I hang out at the Head Start and uh, the uh, daycare, they didn't have an elder to uh, mingle with the children and teach the children uh, the words of our people. So they were slighted. So I have, they asked me if I would go there as well. So I finish at Head Start, then I go to daycare. <laughs> So uh, it's nice to be wanted. <laughs> and the kids are range from age three to five. And then when they turn, after they graduate from Head Start and five years old, they go to elementary school in the community, uh, which is a uh, kindergarten and then they proceed from there. We teach um, lessons to be learned in life, teach them the manners, uh, the, uh, how to be a good child and share, you know, different things like that. And giving them a, it's a perfect name for the, the, the class that they're in, Head Start. Giving them a head start in life so they know how to act in society. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I come in, uh, join the class, and then I teach them what little I know of our language, uh, which is a fair amount. And I don't really go into sentences with them because um, I feel that they're too young, three to four, five. Maybe not. Maybe I should experiment and try make sentences. No. I, I don't think I've ever given it a thought. I just do what I do. I teach them the language. Uh, the language that I teach them is called. Maybe pause. It. It's called a uh, kwapala. And uh, I think um, it, I think it's a shame that um, the uh, we we don't have just kwapala speaking people here. We have uh, New Channel, uh, West Coast, Salish. 
uh, uh, maybe a handful of, of other speaking uh, families in the neighborhood. But um, uh, it's so hard to get other teachers to come in to uh, speak to their children in their language. We've tried. We've tried to invite them, but no, nobody wants to. Nobody's as dedicated as me. No. <laughs> when I first meet them in September, they're just rolling around, playing on the floor. They don't listen to me. And I have to go, listen to Sophie. Sophie's only here for a little while. Sophie's going to teach you a new language. And then eventually they start listening. And at the end, sometimes I don't even have to say anything. They know how to count from one to 10 in, in the Kwabala language. They know the body parts. They know what the weather's doing outside, and they can say them in Kwapala, which is very rewarding. Um, I don't even have to, um, uh, after a while, I don't have to say the words to them. They just know it. Yeah. Very rewarding. Yeah. So I always say, when they do that, they, they go through the class and show me how it's done. I just say, my job is done. I have uh, some children that are in my class right now. They have parents that used to be my students. Yeah. And they're all grown up and had their own children. And now their children are coming here because I've been here for 21 years. So, <laughs> yeah. We've always had culture incorporated into the the day-to-day -day, uh, schooling that they do here, Head Start, and they have drumming, and they have uh, dancing. They teach the children how to dance, paddle dance and stuff like that, and teach them how to use the drum uh, correctly, and uh, yeah. And we invite, uh, community members to come in and show the kids uh, what what cultural things that they can bring to the program. And, uh, and the kids find those visits very enlightening. And, and But lately, it seems that we haven't done so much of the culture so we're trying to brainstorm on what we can do to uh, to have more culture in the children's lives. And because I've been here such a long time that I uh, I just seem to do what I know how to do. I uh, teach the children uh, the body parts, our body parts, uh, the counting, and. Uh, the weather and the animals, tell them the an names of the animals. And I can't, <clears throat> there must be more that I do, but I can't think of them, very nervous. <laughs> but, um, and they learn very quickly. The children learn very quickly. They're just like little sponges, they want to know. <clears throat> they come and ask me, what is this? a uh, little squirrel called, or whatever, there was a stuffed animal. So I tell them, and I tell them what their little finger mean, how do you say it in, in our language, and stuff like that. You know, they ask me, so I tell them. I always hear people in the community, they say, our language is disappearing, the, the elders are all passing away, they're taking the language with them, and, uh, so there, there is a few classes that are in our community and they have uh, classes where there's uh, mentors and uh, uh, people that want to learn from the fluent speakers. There's not very many of them. Maybe I would say at the most six or seven. And uh, 
Uh, it's, just, it's just too bad that we never ever um, um, recorded the ones before they passed away. And, and uh, so there are people in the community that are that think it's a very important. It's a very important thing to learn. So so is that our language isn't isn't completely disappeared and so, so there is a little bit of things that people are doing to to, to um, correct the situation but the, for here we have two teachers one is myself and one is uh, my cousin Betty and um, she's um, about the same stage in the Kwakwala as I am, that she just knows the basics and not not very um, fluent in our language. But uh, we are both go to a class um, of uh, fluent speakers to listen to them and to try and uh, better ourselves in the way we, uh, <clears throat> how we, our knowledge in our talking about the, our, our language. Yeah. Number one, uppermost in my thoughts, is the language. I even uh, wrote a story. I'm a, I write stories as well. I'm a poetry. I write poetry. And uh, my uh, thoughts are that if only more people could come out and speak, learn how to speak our language, then we wouldn't be so scared of it disappearing. And second of all, the culture. Teach the children. Teach them who they are and how they can be much better for learning the culture for them to be uh, feel good about themselves, that they know something and be proud of it and not not hesitate to learn uh, the different dances, the drumming, the singing, the speaking of our language. All of that is included in the culture. More people are learning the language. And I would love it if the, my family and my great, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, would all follow follow my thoughts and uh, thinking how important it is to learn the language and to be part of our culture in the communities. I'll tell you a story of why I started writing. I was driving in a car. I was a passenger and the lady was driving. And I was looking out the side of the window and I, things just popped into my head. They were popping left and right coming into my head. And somebody said to me, it was time. It was always in you, but it was time for you to start writing it on paper. So that's how I started writing stories. And all my stories that I've, I've written about 12, 15 maybe. And uh, all my stories have a lesson to be learned at the end of the story for the child to see what the story meant and how did it end, the goodness that ended it, for them to see how it ended it. This was a good thing. Um, I, I have a, this Liquid Dot Family Life Society had some um, extra funding one year, so they asked me if I wanted to contribute one of my stories. And I hesitated and I didn't know, because I'm not one to be uh, uh, bragging about what I do or whatever. So 
I finally gave them one of my stories and they sent it to a publisher and it got published. And it, it came back with a big box full of all my books in there. <laughs> and we were, it was an Aboriginal day downtown. And I, they set me in a chair with all these books and people were buying them for $10 each. Each book that I sold, I had to autograph it. <laughs> Oh, my fingers were sore at the end of the day. <laughs> Signing my autograph, autograph, autograph. It was quite an interesting process. Uh, I never, when I started writing stories, I wasn't writing them for I could be famous and have these book full of my stories or whatever. All I wanted was for my children, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, to have something of me when I'm not here no more. And hopefully, I don't know how I can do it, but if I can still put it on, even tie, tie holes and, and make all those stories in, with a ribbon or whatever, so they're all put together, and this is for Mandy, this is for Maya, this is for... Roger, and and so on, till I photocopy them. That's what I meant. Yeah, so all my grandchildren can have one of one of my, all my stories. Yeah, I never wanted to be famous or nothing, and because that book was sent and was published, publishers calling me, calling me, calling me all the time. Come, come to this. Uh, workshop on um, uh, authors and where is it? Chicago, New York, wherever, Cleveland. I said, are you going to pay my way there? And, no, we can't do that. And I, I said, I, if I went, could you pay for my um, helper to come with me? No, we can't. Then I'm not coming, I said. But they said, oh, think about how nice it would be for you to have have your um, book for sale in, 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 uh, um, to, for it to become well-known and stuff like that. I said, oh, no, that's okay. But they won't stop. They keep calling me. They keep calling me. <laughs> so that, I know that's my um, part of my life where... I don't, I haven't written any stories for the past, I don't know, two years maybe, year and a half. I should start in again. I think they got the ball rolling already, that they're going to have uh, full immersion classrooms in our community at one of the schools here, down a little ways over there. but. Um, That would be nice, I think. Full immersion, which means the children in elementary school will be learning how to speak our language. And that, like I said, that's my goal in life. That's what I want people to do, whether it be a child, uh, grade three, grade 12, young adults, your children are just starting out in life. Grandmas and grandpas, mums and dads. Everybody should be, I know it's hard, you know, when you, society out there, is, you gotta go to work, you gotta go to shopping, you gotta go, you can't take your time to go learn the language. But even if it's just a handful, let's say, let's put a number on it and say 100. 100 of us are really dedicated. We're going to learn the language. And that will maybe start the process of a lot of us, more than 100, just, just speak the language.
I know I'm dreaming, but... <laughs>